So this video is going to be about eukaryotic gene expression. So let's look at the regulation of eukaryotic gene expression. So first we need to know what a genome is. So a genome is going to be the collection of all of the genes in a particular cell or organism. So for example in humans all of our cells contain the same genome even though um, some of our cells are going to be expressing different genes than other cells in other tissues and other regions of our body. So how are our cells able to do this? So they're able to do that through something called differential gene expression. So differential gene expression is going to be the expression of different genes by cells with the same genome. So like, for example, cells in our body, our neurons have the same um, genes in those cells as our um, endocrine cells in our um, different endocrine glands, for example. So they all have the same genes, but the difference is in what genes are being expressed. So ways that we can do that, so first is going to be histone modification. So histone modification is often done by acetylation, which just means we're adding an acetyl group um, to these histone tails. So if you look at this picture right here, these are our histone tails. And on our histone tails, we have specific amino acids that are available to be chemically modified. So in unacetyl unacetylated histone tails, that's typically associated with reduced transcription levels. So let's say in this cell, we want to um, express some gene that's on one of these pieces of DNA wrapped really tightly around um, one of these histones. So what we can do is we can acetylate those histone tails, which is going to open up this DNA and make it looser and available for transcription. So now we can actually access these genes and transcribe them into mRNA and then translate them into a protein. So acetylation, just one more time, is typically going to be done uh, when we want to loosen the DNA structure to then allow transcription to take place uh, on those genes. So some other regulation uh, of gene expression you might see is DNA methylation. So that's going to be the presence and direct attachment of methyl groups to um, the DNA nitrogenous bases. Specifically, they're typically going to be added to um, cytosines. And so when uh, methyl groups get added, they're typically going to uh, reduce transcription. And so whereas with acetylation, acetylating the histones was going to um, increase transcription with methylation not only does it typically de decrease transcription but it's also um, attached to the nitrogenous base cytosine um, instead of to the histone tail. And so lastly we have something called epigenetic inheritance. So these are going to be transmitted traits that do not involve modifications to the nucleotide sequence. So epigenetic inheritance could be the inheritance of specific methylation patterns on our DNA, for example. And so um, the experiences of your parents and these different epigenetic marks that they get on their DNA can sometimes be passed down to the offspring depending on um, what gene it is and a couple different other factors. But it is possible that these um, specific methylation patterns can be passed down. And when that happens, that is called epigenetic inheritance. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.